Well, here we are once again. I have no clue. This is from, uh, look at that black line. This is from uh, Electronics Express. And it's a dual rail power supply soldering kit. And delivered was $12.95. I've not put one of them together before, but there's a little color code for uh, resistors. And I think it has instructions in it. In the photograph, this only had one potentiometer. Take that back. I had two potentiometers. Uh, one a single turn and one a ten or more turn. So that would sort of imply that it's a tracking regulator. I'm awaiting parts for the dual rail tracking power supply. I thought while I was waiting, I might as well deviate a little bit and build this. It's not tracking. But we'll see how close positive to common and negative to common are. There's nothing very special about the parts. However, there are two of these. And there are two of these. But they're not identical. These are not identical, and this is not identical. So you need to check out the parts list. There are four of these capacitors, they're all identical. Resistors have color codes. We have one diode with a band at the end. And we have two LEDs. But the flat side the housing is marked on the silk screening as well as the positive lead. It's marked with a white plus sign. So we'll just proceed to build the thing. This is a little uh, dual rail power supply assembled with the exception of these two rather large capacitors. And I have not yet plugged in the uh, LM358. Now looking at the power supply, uh, looking at this module that is, it requires DC input and with the exception of this diode, the DC input from the remote power source is connected directly to DC output. And the same is uh, said for the negative input it doesn't have a diode in it but it's connected to uh, the output so whatever voltage is present at the input the remote power supply is going to be equal here to here this upper half of the circuit serves to adjust this to the midpoint of whatever the supply voltage is. It does not adjust the output voltage. After all, the output voltage is equal to the input voltage, less this little uh, diode drop. 
Now these two output capacitors are located across the right here and right here. Well, I've got some corrections to do to this power supply. And uh, these capacitors, this one's connected across here. And this one is connected across here. 1000 microfarad. That's a little bit large if we intend to have current limiting. Now current limiting has got to be supplied by the input supply. Obviously this can't do any current limiting. I was supposed to have a dot there. <laughs> and I've got some other little things. So how does this keep this centered, so to speak? Well, we've got this, we've got essentially a voltage divider here. Feeding pin 3. And we have a negative output from the common back to pin 2. So, if this is adjusted perfectly so that the voltage here is one half here to here, this op amp will do whatever necessary to make sure that this voltage is equal to this voltage, which if it's properly adjusted is one half. From what I can tell, this circuit uses the other half of the LM358. It has a voltage divider also connected across here and here, which should give half voltage, half of whatever way you want to point, to here. Meanwhile, since this is midway between the rails, it comes down here and goes in the positive. I believe if it's above more positive than halfway, it'll turn on one of these LEDs. And if it comes more negative than halfway, it'll turn the other LED on. We'll get to this later. What I want to say is this is depending on the accuracy of these resistors. Or they could be selected for identical readings rather than identical uh, advertised resistance. The color codes. If these are truly matched, the voltage here will be half of this. If this circuit's working, the voltage here will be half of this. So initially what I want to do is power this thing up, no load, no operational amplifier, and adjust the difference between these two voltages to be zero. Now, I'm assuming that this voltage divider is correct. But for initial startup, I think we'll be fine. There was a mistake on the original schematic which resulted in this point being connected to ground. Well, that effectively shorts out uh, V2. So measuring conductivity on the board comes up like this. This is a 1 meg pot and this is a 1 tenth meg pot. I'm going to assume this is coarse adjustment and this is fine adjustment. So here I am on pins 5 and 6 and adjust the coarse potentiometer 
just to see how equal these resistors are. I'm going to measure the voltage across one and then the other. So across R1, I get 1283, and across R7, I get 12. Not not real good. It's not the best. Get that to zero using the course adjustment. Pretty touchy. And using what I believe to be the fine adjustment. So there I have a difference of nothing on the, this meter. I'm going to turn it off. And plug in the uh, op amp. Now the op amp in, I'm going to turn it on. One thing that's happened is the red LED's gotten really dim. Things are pretty touchy, but I did get it down to around uh, 16 millivolts. I don't know. But look what's happened to the lamps. Apparently what we want to do is get the lights blinking, blinking with the same frequency seems to be uh, minus actually bouncing back and forth between minus and plus a tenth of a millivolt and the lamps I don't know are they equal so apparently this is intended to be a balance indicator the whole thing seems to be if you're using these as a meter it's only going to be as good as these two resistors are. I'll get two identical voltmeters and we'll take a look at that.